In this video, we're going to take a look at training simulations in the all-new Adobe Captivate. In the video prior to this one, I covered demo simulations. Demos are quite a bit different than training or assessment simulations. Today we're doing training simulations. Demo simulations are virtual mouse clicks and virtual typing text and things like that, but there's no interactivity for the learner to perform. So we also have training simulations and training simulations are more like knowledge checks where we turn the controls over to the learner and ask them to perform the steps that maybe we just taught them in a demo simulation. Let's take a look at training simulations now. Okay, so if I have the Adobe Captivate welcome screen open here and I'm going to click on new simulation. And before we start our recording here, let's go over to preferences and take a look at modes here. Now, we are specifically looking at training uh, simulations, so select training. And these are the options that you can select. So for each slide in a training simulation, we want to add instructions. So there'll be a visual set of text instructions that the learners can follow, knowing what the next steps are. We're also going to do narration instructions as well, but a little bit more on that later. We're not going to show mouse location and movement and highlight boxes for mouse clicks. That's primarily for demo simulations. I guess you could add it to a training simulation, but because we're asking learners to use their own mouse, there's no reason to have a second mouse on screen. Let's scroll down a little bit here. Notice that we have two categories of options available, click boxes and input fields. And if you think about it, you know, when you think about a computer application, there really are two things that are going on. You're either typing something on your keyboard or using your mouse and clicking on something, either clicking a button or checking a checkbox or a radio button, etc. So really this is all we're concerned about in a training simulation. So we're gonna add click boxes every time the mouse clicks and we're gonna add, automatically add input fields for text fields. We don't want a success caption for either because if you can imagine, let's say a procedure that requires hundreds of steps, if you congratulated the learner for doing it right every single time, that would be very tedious. However, if they make mistakes, we are going to show them a failure caption for either situation. While I'm not a fan of hint captions, and I will show you why in a little bit, we will do it in this case here. You can limit the number of attempts, either for click boxes or input fields, but for a training simulation, because this is really a practice lesson for your learner, I recommend that you leave it unchecked, which means they'll have unlimited attempts. The other thing too, is you've got this show hand cursor on the click box. To me, that kind of reveals where the correct answer is. So I usually leave that unselected as well. All right, so we're good to go. You have a choice. You can do a full screen capture, which captures your entire window, your entire computer monitor, or you could select a custom region here. As you can see, I can select any region I wish. And of course I could even resize that region. I can type in the dimensions that I wish to use manually. But my personal favorite type of simulation is application window where instead of going full screen or selecting um, you know, a certain dimension, I can literally select the application I wish to record. It will bring it into focus if it's minimized here. I can also be very precise about what part of the application I'm selecting. So in this case here, I'm selecting the entire browser, but I don't really want to capture the browser. I want to capture the web page. So we can select app region and then just click somewhere on the web page to make sure that it's not going to capture the tabs, the URL bar, and my bookmarks. Again, I'm, I usually add narration at the edit stage. I don't usually record system audio unless the application 
is something like Audition or Audacity with that, you know, works with audio or generates audio. I don't want this to pan. I'm, I really want it to stick with it, just this window here. So I am going to turn off panning and I'm going to select training and unselect demo if this kicks here. Okay, so I think I'm good to go. Good to get started with this training simulation here. So let's click on the record button. You will see this three, two, one countdown, but no stress, right? You, you can perform your steps as slowly and meticulously as possible here. So I'm going to click on the going to field. That's the first step. And I'm going to type in the destination of where I wish to go to. We're looking for hotels in New York City. And I can select uh, the best match from that list of options here. Again, you'll hear those uh, keyboard clicks and uh, obviously the mouse clicks and the uh, camera click sounds to let you know that it's capturing those steps. Now I'm ready to search for that hotel room. I'm going to click on search. And once I'm done, obviously this would be a much longer uh, simulation, but this is enough for now. I'm going to press the end key on my keyboard to stop the recording. And this will generate a file called untitled underscore training and a unique identifier afterwards, you know, seven, eight, nine, etc. depending on how many of these you've recorded before. I can close my browser window at this point and let's just maximize the Captivate window and let's take a look at what we've got here. When I'm editing a training or an assessment simulation or for that matter, a demo simulation, I do like to have my timeline open so I can see what's on my screen and when it's happening. Because if you were to ignore this background, really the instructions and the click box are the elements within this slide. The background is just a picture. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Let's start off with our instructions. I'm just going to move that so it's not blocking anything on the screen. And we can resize this a little bit. And I'm going to include the instructions here. Click on the going to field. I'm going to highlight and then bold the text for the field name that we're working with. So this is the going to field. I really want it to be clear what the learner is expected to do here. So that's taken care of. That, that is all I need to do for my instructions. I'm going to click this click box here. Notice there's selection handles in the corners of all that click box. This is probably where my mouse clicked, but obviously it could be a different spot for my learner. So I'm going to resize the click box to make sure it covers the entire field that's on screen here. Now with this click box are a series of captions. So I can show those captions and we can edit them. The first caption being the failure caption. So let's move this maybe just above the going to field here. And I'm just going to edit the text to be something simple like try again. If this was uh, not an unlimited uh, attempt situation, I might say incorrect and then tell them what I want them to do next. But try again is fine in this case here. I'm quickly going to change that to be a white text there and let's actually let's select one of the pre-existing presets there we'll change it to white and i think it shouldn't be old in this case here and we'll center it within the caption and i can save that i can update the changes i just made to that preset so i can use this again and again throughout the course i'll just resize this there that looks good now the hint caption, and you'll see this later when we preview this, what happens is that as I get close to this field, the hint caption will appear, but when I'm actually over the field, it'll disappear. I find it a little distracting. I think possibly one solution would put it far away from the, uh, the actual uh, click box. And we'll just type in here, you're getting warmer or something to that effect here. And we can do the same thing. I'll just change that font a little bit there. 
So that takes care of this slide. The only thing missing is narration. So if I click outside of the slide just a number of times to make sure that none of my components are selected, I can click on the audio inspector and we could import some audio at this point here. Um, I have some clips already prepared. You could also use text to speech if you wish. I'm going to go ahead and open this here. And you'll notice that the little swivel icon next to your simulation slide appears. And obviously, the audio inspector has changed a little bit. I could do things like loop the audio, fade it in, etc. But what I really want to do is expand the slide. And you see it starts right away. I find it's a little unnatural to have it start so quickly. So I like to click around the half second mark and then right click on the audio and select start audio from play at position. So there's just a little break in the narration as you go from slide to slide. So this slide is good. The only thing I could possibly add at this point would be some uh, closed captions, but we'll leave that for another tutorial. Let's go to slide two. Now slide two is a little different from slide one in that we are using an input field. Now, this doesn't always get placed in the correct spot. And as you can see here, my input field is way up top here. And it's not really a good match for this. So we're going to do some edits here. Let's go ahead and click on our Visual Properties Inspector icon. And it will do a couple of things. We're asking people to type in New York. Incidentally, we're going to need that instruction. I found that with text entry fields, the instructions don't show up, so you have to add them manually, but that's okay. Let's go down to Appearance, Under Text. We can bump this up maybe to 30 and bold, and that's pretty close to what's there. Under Shape, it's generated a border that I don't think you personally need. Uh, it does have a solid fill background, so you can use this field to cover up whatever is in the background image. But I'm going to unselect border. And then just kind of reposition this to be over top of the field where someone is typing. Now, this is an important point here. Make sure you check out what's going on on tablet. You may need to increase that font size a little bit here. Let's try a few different font sizes. That looks pretty good for that field. And similarly, on mobile phone, what does that look like? If you need to see more of the capture, you can just sort of move that there. That looks good. But I think, again, the font size should be up just a tad bit here. Let's go with 21, I think, works here. Go to our audio portion here, and we will go to the system and bring in slide number two's audio. Now, in this case here, the audio is a longer audio clip than the slide duration, so we're going to extend that time. That's not a problem. I can't imagine why you would say no to that. And I think what I'm going to do here is around the half second mark, we can start the audio from that point there. Let's go to slide three. Another click box, so we'll just resize that to match possible places that a user might click. Let's select Visual Properties. We'll take a look at our captions here. And again, we'll say, we'll put in Try Again, like we did before. And we can just resize that. We'll place that maybe up top here. The other thing is our Hint Captions. So again, maybe moving it far away helps. And we'll say, you're getting closer. You can change it up if you wish. And again, we'll just uh, update that with the text that we need here. Uh, and I'll click away. And of course, the um, the instructions need to be populated as well. So we'll uh, type in select the search results that best matches your needs, something like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll click in the scrap area here and select the audio icon and I'm going to import slide number three's audio. And again, we'll just add that little break at the beginning so that we don't get any 
problems with Young. Last one is fairly straightforward here. We're going to say click on the search button. And again, we can bold the word search. Resize the button so that it covers the entire button in the screenshot. And let's go to visual properties and show those captions. And we'll say try again. And you're getting warmer. Let me just quickly change that to the different font that we've selected. That looks good. Again, you can resize these if you need to. And uh, let's bring in the audio for that. And like before, I'm just going to push the audio out half a second or so. Now the final slide does not have any interactive elements there, but what we can do is we can go up to our visual properties inspector, select instructions, and just provide uh, a little, you know, feedback essentially. We're not using it as instructions, but we can say, congratulations, you have successfully found a hotel room in New York. And uh, if you want to, you can, of course, maybe make this a little different than regular instructions and just bump up the font there. You know, we can just do something similar for each of the different sizes of windows that might result from me. There we go. Uh, last but not least, let's bring in the audio for slide number five. Go select system and slide number five. Click open. Again, we have to extend the slide to match the audio length. And I'll just expand this and we will go to the half second mark and start audio from that position there. All right. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. As I was going through this, I did think of one thing that I would recommend that you change. Um, I'm selecting the text input field on slide number two. Let's go back to visual properties. And one of the things I would unselect is case sensitive. The reason being is someone might type in New York with all lowercase letters. We don't want them to get stuck and not have a search result for that or not be able to move forward. So we want to make sure that that is unselected. The other thing you can do, let's open the edit field. Let's say, for example, the answers were Washington, D.C. Some people might type in Washington. So you can add options for the different possible answers that people might type in. Like, for example, someone might type in NY for New York. Or, you know, if in the case of Washington, they might type in Washington, D.C. with no periods, and then Washington, D, pop period, C period. You know, there's so many different variables that could really occur. It's best to try and capture most of those if possible. I think we're fairly safe with New York. Uh, we'll leave that for now, but... Just something you need to be aware of is you can go in and uh, and make sure that that validation has enough options for it there. Let's return to slide one and preview this project to see how it looks. Click on the going to field. Okay, so I need to perform those tasks. Notice the hint caption shows up as I get close to the going to field, like I said, because it usually just flashes like that, I find it distracting. So I'll leave it up to you whether that's something you want to include in your training simulations. But let's go ahead and click going to. Type in your destination in the going to field. In this case, use New York. New York. Select New York from the search results. Click on search. And then I'll click on search. Again, that hint field is weird. Congratulations, you have successfully searched for a hotel in New York. So again, a couple of things I'd like to point out. I did have a play bar. Uh, because you're forcing people to use the click boxes and text entry fields here, 
You may ultimately decide to turn this off if you wish, because obviously someone just could just click next, uh, then go through all the slides without actually following the interactive steps. On the other hand, one of the things that you might want to consider is that uh, this is part of a much larger course. So one of the things that you might do is select the slides, maybe even all of them at once. And of course, you could copy them and then paste them into, again, that much larger course. Perhaps that course includes a demo simulation to start off with, followed by this training simulation. And then the final portion could be an assessment where they perform these same steps, but without the safety net of instructions or hint captions, whatever it might be. And of course, you can have regular Adobe Captivate slides in there as well. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.